Okay. Now, what I'd like to do is to take you into the mathematics behind this and explain why both of these algorithms are optimal. If you're into theoretical computer science, you will know that there must be 25, maybe more, different variations of spanning tree algorithms, which all are optimal. And they're, they're, there's all kinds of data structure and, and specific graph class issues that are underneath this subject that in some certain situations argue in favor of one algorithm as to be preferred to another one. But what I, what I want to do is show that both these algorithms are correct. That if you apply them, you will indeed get an optimal solution. And the mathematics here is quite interesting because it has a linear algebra flavor, and yet it's not linear algebra, not in the classic sense. OK, so let me remind you of a result that you learned when you studied vectors and matrices back in calculus. When you have a basis for a vector space, here's the basis, and you have a vector which is not in the basis, then this vector can be written as a linear combination of basis vectors. Now, if that vector is not 0, and you look at this linear combination, some of the coefficients will be 0, some of them will not, but there will be at least one which is not 0. And then there is this exchange principle that says if this vector is not 0, not the 0 vector in your vector space, and here's your basis, and you write this one as a linear combination of these, you can take any one where the coefficient is not 0 and remove it and replace it with this one. And you have a different basis. This is the exchange principle from linear algebra. And you're going to see this exchange principle applied in a discrete setting in this conversation. 